Observing baby animals can be better than a magic show. The wilderness settings are spectacular, and there is something enchanting, almost spellbinding, about the baby animals themselves. Like master magicians, they can charm, excite, entertain, and astonish us. In our fantasies, in legends and folklore, many animals possess remarkable supernatural powers. But in the natural world, baby animals are perhaps the most magical of all. Survival in the wilderness is often difficult. Like stage magicians, baby animals must not only develop specific physical and sensory skills, but adapt to their surroundings, no matter how challenging. For tiny emperor penguins born on Antarctic ice flows, there are tricks of the trade. Bonding with their mothers for protection from the cold and predators, learning how to fill an empty stomach with regurgitated food. More unique is the amazing way they have of riding around on their mother's feet. Even if one falls off occasionally and begins walking across the snow-covered nursery on its own steam. The walkabout builds confidence, but the mother penguin, protector and mentor, is not far behind. Nearby, Older penguins demonstrate a technique for gliding over the ice on their stomachs. This little chick is about 10 days old. Its downy coat is not yet waterproof. It will stay close to its mother for several weeks, then go to sea and spend most of its life underwater. Now it just wants to stay warm. Bonds are so strong between a mother and chick, it's almost as if they can read each other's mind. The large emperor colony is raucous and sociable, not a bad neighborhood to grow up in. At times, a local get-together can resemble a football huddle. Actions, however, can be deceptive. We can only speculate on why this chick is pecking at a sibling. Obviously, the young penguins have not revealed all their secrets. high-flying orangutans of Sumatra. A female orangutan gives birth to one... Many marvelous animals inhabit the African savanna. Largest and probably most impressive are the giant elephants that roam around the territory in extended families or herds of ten or more. A sturdy little six-month-old calf only looks small in comparison. Baby elephants develop slowly, almost like a child, reaching puberty around 12 years and maturity by 18. Once again, the mother does all the raising and nurturing. It's a loose but closely knit community with good communication skills and plenty of opportunity for rough and tumble play. Whether these actions are bonding, a mild form of dominance, or just a little push and shove, it's fun to watch. Young elephants nurse until about two years old and the mother's milk actually gets richer as the calf grows. Even at this tender age, the babies are as big as sumo wrestlers and have equally big appetites. 
Even in the wilds, marching elephants appear to be leading some important parade. And as usual, the babies steal the show. While crossing the savanna both night and day, the elephants are never far from water. They drink enormous amounts of water, but also like to bathe and wallow in the muddy shallows. It's soothing, good for the skin. This hefty baby, a little over a year old, is having the time of its life. Near water, they often find salt licks that serve as natural herbal gardens, providing needed salt and mineral traces. They don't lick the salt, of course, but draw it up into their amazing trunks and transport it to their mouths. Babies need to develop trunk skills. Elephant trunks have something like 40,000 individual muscles, nature's most complex nose extension. and only an elephant can rub its eyes with its nose. Like children, baby elephants often don't seem to know which way to turn. At times like this, the mother provides a safe haven. Grass usually makes up 80% of an elephant's diet. But rummaging around the salt lick, you never know what might turn up. And it's good exercise for the young ones under mother's gentle guidance. Mammoth herds of wildebeests share the savanna with the elephants. But there are many fascinating smaller species, including the unique and gregarious rock hyrax, said to be physically and structurally related to the elephant. These tiny elephants in disguise are about one month old. A mother chases away an interloper so her own baby can nurse undisturbed. Agile, alert, often noisy, young hyraxes are talented rock and tree climbers. There can be up to 100 babies in a colony. They are vegetarians and must learn quickly to feed on tender leaves. Nothing like a thunderstorm to rain on your parade. But soon, the sun returns. Climbing on an adult's back is great fun. But they are so patient and understanding, it's hard sometimes to get a reaction. However, lively siblings are a different matter. Since two are better than one, why not team up and try again? It looks like fooling around, just having a good time, but bonding is an important part of these playful activities. Hyraxes learn early who they can trust and count on for support. As for being members of the elephant clan, well, that's some kind of magic. A 
appearances can deceive, but this looks like genuine affection. Sheltered in the wooded areas of the savanna, we find a small family of spotted hyenas. The babies are about 10 weeks old. Despite their rough, wild appearance, mother hyenas are gentle and caring. The young are frisky and playful. At this age, they're still nursing. When they grow up, they will be transformed into powerful carnivores with bone-crushing teeth and jaws and few natural enemies. The hyenas get along reasonably well with their sometime neighbors, the dog-faced olive baboons. A nursing baby baboon literally clings to its mother for the first year, for nourishment, of course, but also for security and emotional support. If her baby is threatened, the mother just scoops it out of harm's way and delivers a strong warning to the troublemaker. Troops of olive baboons live in the trees and in drier open areas. They feed on a Spartan diet of grasses, roots, flowers, fruits, and insects. The father strides into the picnic site for a family reunion. Older young baboons, as we might expect, are expert tree climbers. These old world monkeys can live up to 25 years. The royal family of the savanna is the African lion population descendants of a long line of powerful nocturnal hunters. It's pretty much their domain. They live and breed in small groups. Their cubs, even at three months, are strong and playful. The older lions like to lie around a lot in the midday sun. Adults can be pressed into service as playmates by a persistent cub. Grooming is another popular activity. Around about now, the mother deserves a break. It's a rather peaceful and well-organized family unit with a surprising emphasis on fun and games. Baby lions develop relatively quickly for large mammals, being weaned at one year and are more or less independent at a year and a half. When they reach adulthood, their roar too will be heard across the open savanna. We've come a long way from the African savanna. We're flying over the Canadian Arctic. It's late March and somewhere down here in the vast frozen landscape, Polar bear mothers are beginning to emerge from their dens with their vulnerable three to four month old cubs. A baby polar bear will stay close to its mother who will nurse it and protect it from the chilling winds and a few predators, like this solitary male bear tramping past the den site.
The danger passes and the cub returns to feeding. After a moment of tender bonding, the mother and baby disappear into the warmth and protection of the den, under the snow and ice. At another location, a mother polar bear emerges from the den first, looking around, testing the wind, before signaling her two cubs to follow or remain hidden. Her eyesight and sense of smell are quite good. The coast is clear. The cubs crawl out of the den and follow in her shadow, down the icy slopes. Not too far away, a herd of dark, shaggy-coated musk oxen digs for vegetation beneath the snow. A mother grooms her newborn. On somewhat shaky legs, a calf attempts to stand and move about. Almost immediately, it turns its attention to nursing. Sometimes referred to as the cattle of the Arctic, musk oxen are said to be strong, even courageous animals that stick together through hard times. The dramatic desert regions of the American Southwest provide a startling contrast in habitat and in native animal species. A western diamond-backed rattlesnake approaches a den occupied by coyote pups. About six weeks old, the pups are more curious than fearful. Fortunately, the rattlesnake is not in an aggressive mood. Some distance away, a parent supervises a bit of rough and tumble among two playful siblings. One pup pins the other, but while the referee's back is turned. Portrayed as wily tricksters, the resourceful coyotes often symbolize the free spirit of the American Southwest. Even at an early age, they roam far and wide, looking for a hearty meal in a desert hideaway. The Joshua Tree is another symbol of the American Southwest, of this fabulous desert area that is anything but deserted with unusual and colorful vegetation and a largely secretive population of strange and wonderful inhabitants, like the diminutive burrowing owls. In Arizona, we observe a four-week-old baby owl trying to figure out what to do with a rather large meal. Nearby, two sibling chicks struggle with their own food scraps. One gets aggressive until a parent steps in to calm things down and suddenly becomes the center of attention. Moments later, the parent retreats to the den entrance and a baby stretches its tiny wings. A curious youngster watches some serious digging and gets caught in a sandstorm. An audience gathers, but at a safe distance. Well, enough of that. The escape hatch is now ready for any emergency. Not a common owl predator, sleek, dark ravens are aerobatic wizards and the largest perching birds in the world. They command respect, if not fear. To be on the safe side, a chick runs for cover. Thank <laughs> you. 
A false alarm. The ravens disappear. But it was good practice anyway. A historical desert character of note is the burrow, sometimes described as the tattered outlaw, a descendant of animals lost or cast off in the desert as far back as the 16th century. This young burrow, still nursing, is about five months old. A larger foal is a little older. Burrows come in a variety of colors, are hardy and sure-footed, and have no natural predators. They thrive on foliage other desert browsers reject. Another dramatic change in habitat. We're still in North America, but flying over open prairie wetlands. In the sloughs and marshes below, colorful birds are nesting and their delightful chicks are hatching. We visit a floating nest and a family of handsome black terns. One parent broods the day-old chicks while the other provides the food. A male ruddy duck catches our attention while the hungry chicks await the parents' return. During this food delivery, there is a nest exchange. Close by, bright red baby coots stage a tug-of-war over a tasty midday snack. A turn chick disappears under its mother's warm and comfortable security blanket of fine feathers. A muskrat nibbles on marsh vegetation. Suddenly, as if by magic, the baby chick reappears. A second chick pops out when another meal arrives. Adult terns in flight can catch flying insects right out of the air. Time for a rest on a parent's back in a prairie marsh. The green rolling hills of the British countryside, the fabled landscape of poets, novelists, painters and visionaries, is home to a splendid variety of native species and some rather famous escapees hidden out in the hills, valleys and rivers. A unique and fascinating animal struggles for survival on the arid prairie grasslands of Russia. The saiga, with the inflated nose of an elephant seal, the legs, horns and speed of an antelope, and a surprising resemblance to the goat and the donkey. Wanderers with no fixed home, they are constantly on the move, pausing briefly each spring on open calving grounds to deliver their baby saigas that move about and nurse early on the first day. Young saigas develop rapidly. When two days old, they are able to run as fast as a human. A threatened species, but aggressive and resourceful, with a nose more sophisticated than it looks. Enormous saiga herds once roamed across Europe and Asia to Alaska. Now we're farther north, flying over the desolate Siberian tundra. On our way to cliffs and outcrops along the eastern rim of the remote Tamir Peninsula. Here we find the only nesting colonies in the world of the red-breasted goose. The babies are charmers. 
The bird parents are bold, colorful, and clever. They even take out an insurance policy on their gosling's survival. They nest exclusively near raptors, birds of prey, like the rare peregrine falcon that not only tolerates them, but keeps most predators from the territory. Female red-breasted geese have been known to actually delay egg production until they can synchronize with raptor nesting. However, when out for a stroll down to the waterfront, they keep a respectful distance from their nesting neighbors. Steep cliffs are a greater problem for the three-day-old goslings. The young geese are in for a rough ride. It's not the easy way for goslings to go swimming, but the daring adventure is a complete success. On the Canadian Arctic tundra, snowy owls, among the world's largest owls, can be seen nesting and hunting for food. The parents are kept busy sharing nesting duties. The chicks, hatching up to five days apart, are at various stages of development. A golden plover passes the nest. An owl parent can get extremely aggressive when disturbed. A long-tailed Jaeger might attack an unprotected nest. A butterfly brings a flash of color to the barren terrain. At another nest site, a male parent returns from a successful hunt and gliding down the runway like a 747 makes a soft landing, handing over the catch, probably a lemming, for its mate to distribute among the owlets. In May, high up on the most inaccessible and dangerous slopes of North America's Rocky Mountains, female bighorn sheep give birth to one, possibly two, lambs that are off and running when only one week old. But they don't wander far from their mother's side and soon begin mimicking her actions. They discover how to find water in rocky crevices while taking a break from playful activities with their siblings, scrambling over the rocks, climbing, jumping, chasing each other. It's all healthy exercise. While still nursing, they learn to graze for grasses, sedges, and other mountainside vegetation. A short pause to see what everyone else is up to, then it's off again.
A tiny lamb walking beside a ewe, possibly its mother, decides to lean on an old ram. When the ram fails to respond, the lamb vents its frustration and returns to one of its more reliable playmates. Young yellow-bellied marmots are much smaller Rocky Mountaineers. Stocky, even chubby, but agile, alert, resourceful, and very playful. Wrestling is a major activity. Our combatants are almost four months old and seem to be enjoying each other's company. Far below, in May, by the bank of a turbulent river, an elk mother is observed with her weak old defenseless spotted calf. It's a tender, intimate moment of gentle grooming and bonding within the mighty Wapiti family. Later, upriver, another elk mother prepares her three-week-old calves, born on an island, to cross the swift, flowing river to the mainland for the first time. She tests the waters slowly, cautiously. The first calf steps into the stream and is caught in the current. The other calf is slow to follow as the first calf is swept downstream. but decides to give it a try. The first calf struggles to shore, but now the second calf is in trouble. Safe on land, the first calf dries off. Its mother follows along beside her second calf. And all's well that ends well. In late spring, near tranquil lakes, rivers and ponds in the eastern woodlands, another huge North American mammal, the majestic moose, gives birth in forest seclusion to one calf, sometimes two. This little moose is two to three weeks old. When fully grown, it will look like its father. A mother and calf run across a woodland clearing through the morning sun. A common loon is a familiar bird of the northeastern woodlands that border the Great Lakes. Also known as the ring-necked loon and the great northern diver, it's a beautiful, haunting symbol of the wilderness spirit. This dark, downy chick seen on its isolated and solitary lakeshore nest is little more than a day old. Its parents are nearby searching for aquatic food. Soon after, the chick leaves the nest, tumbling towards the water, to join its parents on a swimming and feeding expedition. It's a learning experience, how to grab food without dropping it. The haunting calls and cries, the eerie yodels and laughs of the common loon echo across the northern lake. (coughs) 
Warm and dry, chicks often ride around on their parents' backs when not developing their feeding skills. A Michigan marsh can provide a playground for another popular and entertaining species. The masked bandit of the wetland forest, the raccoon, described at times as the little bear with a ringtail. These mischievous and self-reliant baby raccoons are only three to four weeks old. No obstacle is too great, no challenge too difficult. After the fall, it's onward and upward. A large old tree stump that may actually contain the raccoon den also serves as a handy, bark-covered jungle gym. However, the baby raccoons appear to do more climbing over each other then over the tree stump itself. Like reaching the top of Mount Everest, there's always the problem of getting back down. We can only wonder what's going on in that active little mind. Many animal species have left the wilderness to take up nesting closer to human habitation, often in abandoned and decaying buildings such as this old granary in southwestern Ontario. These young turkey vultures, the smaller, fluffier one about 10 days old, the other closer to 14, came into the world on a makeshift nest in the upper level of the granary. They will develop quickly and fledge in less than two months while completely changing their color and appearance. An added bonus at this bird shelter is all the loose grain scattered about on the floor, although it isn't the tidiest of dwellings. One baby vulture grooms the other, picking off bits of straw and wood chips. One parent patrols the top of the concrete granary while the other sits on a perch nearby. One youngster focuses attention on its developing wings, which will span two meters when fully grown. But all they're good for now is a little vigorous flapping. The younger sibling doesn't seem to know enough to get out of the way, or just doesn't care. A few bits of grain only whet the appetite for a more substantial meal. There's a flurry of excitement when a parent flies in with a predigested main course. But the babies will have to work to retrieve the catch of the day from the parent's throat.
the youngest vulture steps back from the fray. Well, there's always the next time. North of Japan, in the Pacific Ocean off Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, there is a remote stretch of coastline that provides a reserve or sanctuary for rafts of enchanting sea otters that live and breed in these kelp-rich waters. Born at sea, baby otters ride the waves on their mother's stomach while she floats on her back. All the food they will ever need can be found in the unkelpfer kelp forest, reaching up from the ocean floor. Sea otters wrap themselves in kelp to make beds for resting and sleeping. Here underwater, we observe once again the miracle of birth. A pregnant female otter wraps herself up in a ball rolling over and over as she gently helps the emerging pup with her teeth and paws. The newborn baby is now above water on the mother's stomach. She will clean it off before allowing it to float beside her. Its natural buoyancy will protect it from drowning until it's strong enough to swim. It's given a thorough grooming, up to three hours a day. The tiny otter will nurse and ride around on its mother's stomach for almost three weeks or more. On the rocks by the seashore, a mother is attempting to wake her baby from a deep sleep and return it to the ocean, its natural home. The baby remains lethargic and uncooperative. But amazingly, a blast of cold water brings it to life. Another mother and baby race past, moving backwards at breakneck speed. A trick sea otters learn early is to use their stomachs as a dinner table, and later, to crack shells with stones as they chomp their way through the seafood buffet. However, for the younger ones, it takes practice. A parent checks on progress. It's a good neighborhood for the young sea otters, relatively safe and protected, with the babies getting lots of care and attention.